Hey, what's up everybody? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 52 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to create a custom widget to display our popular post, our most viewed post. If we open uh, the current status of our website, the front end, and we open the sidebar, you will notice here we already have a couple of custom widgets that we previously created. We have the recent comments, we edited this, we created the widget to display our wonderful face and all our custom information, categories and tags, and we created a bunch of hooks inside the functions to edit the look, the aspect of these widgets. Now it's time to create a completely new widget from scratch and extend the functionality of WordPress a little bit. So in order to create a um, popular type of post, we need to save the data of a specific post type inside the database because in order to pull a list of most viewed posts, we need to query the database. We need to access the database, check how many posts have been viewed the most, and then create a list. We don't want to do this every time we load the page, every time we have this widget, because it's really demanding for the database to get queried, to get called every time and return those data. So we need to find a way to save the number of views dynamically inside the database and then query only that number, only those data, the number of views and return the posts based on previously saved data. So we don't have to uh, ask the database to process that information every time we access a page of our website. So let's take a look on how to do it. First of all, the decision that we have to make is how we want to uh, handle the popularity of a specific post. You can do it by the number of comments or the number of shared. My opinion opinion, my idea is based on the number of views, but of course you can do however you please. This tutorial is gonna help you to create a custom widget to display popular posts based on number of views. So first of all, let's access the ink folder inside the widgets.php file. That is the file that we're using to create all our custom widgets. We're going to create a unique function to save one specific count number per post. So every time the user access to look at a post, the database will save a plus one to the visualization type of metadata to that specific post. So we can check in real time or we can collect every time a post is viewed by a user and then having those numbers order from the bigger to the smaller and have the related post printed in a widget. So let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and let's create a comment section here. Let's copy this stuff, let's paste it and let's create this comment save posts views and let's create a function called sunset underscore save post views open and close the brackets and inside here we need to pass one single variable because we need to detect the post ID and this variable is going to be passed when we call this specific function but we need to have the post ID in order to save the metadata related to the specific post that the user is viewing. So open the curly brackets, let's write something cool inside. So first of all let's declare a bunch of variables. The first variable is the meta key and the meta key is going to be equal to a unique value that you want to specify to recall that meta key and you have to remember that unique value. So in my case, it's going to be sunset underscore post views. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to remember. The second variable is going to be the views. So we need to check how many views current the post that we're seeing that the user is looking at has. And of course, at the beginning, it's going to be zero, but we have to retrieve those number in case we already have a metadata save inside the database. So in order to grab the number of the views of the specific post, we have to call the get underscore 
post meta function of WordPress. And a get post meta comes with three different attributes. The first one is the post ID that we're passing dynamically inside the function, so we can specify the post ID. The second one is the meta key that we defined before, so we pass the variable of the meta key. The third one is a boolean, so we can specify through or false in case these get post meta we return simply the single value without interpreting that single value as an array. If we specify false, this value is going to be packaged inside an array and we don't want that. So now what we have to do, we have to increase the number of views every time the user access the post. So if we give for granted that views has a number, so in this case it's going to be one, two or three, we can just simply increase it. So views is going to be plus plus. And that means that if the views is two, in this case it's going to be three. And we can update this data inside this location with the meta key. But if views is zero or it's completely empty, we have to start with a number because we cannot increase a variable that it's empty. So what we have to do, we have to check if the views is actually happening, if we already have this variable and it's a number. So what we can do, we can simply create an inline if statement to streamline our process of checking. So let's create a variable called count and the variable called count, it's equal to an inline if statement that is going to be empty and oops, empty. Mm -hmm. And if the views it's empty, so we give it question mark, the result, so if the views it's empty it means that we don't have anything saved for that specific post yet, the result is going to be zero because we are starting with that, otherwise it's going to be equal to views because if it's not empty it means we have already a number so we want the count to reflect the number of views and now we can safely after we did that we can safely count plus plus increase the amount and here we should specify the zero as a number not a string because we want this to be an integer after we did that the only thing that it's left is to use the function to update underscore post meta and the update post meta has pretty much the same options that we have here so we have to specify first the post id that this post meta is related to second we have to specify the meta key and in our case is a sunset post views and the third value is the new value that we have to update that we have to replace the current value with and in our case is count so if this starts to zero starts from zero is going to be one this update post meta is pretty safe because if we don't have any post meta saved with this information already, the system WordPress is not going to update it, but it's going to create it from scratch for us. So it's going to convert dynamically this update post meta to add post meta. So we don't have to worry about checking if this post meta is already in place or not. The system will take care of this automatically. And that's it, we have this function now. Before doing anything else though, we have to hook this function to a specific hook, a specific trigger of WordPress to avoid uh, duplication of this function. Because what we're gonna do basically, we're gonna call this function and pass the post ID every time a user access one single blog post. So it's viewing the blog post. But if you remember in the blog post, if we access the front end, if we access, for example, the gallery to post, we have here also the post navigation. So we have previous and next post. When we do this, WordPress detects and grabs those post IDs and prints those post IDs in this page. So it could happen that uh, there's a, a specific moment in the WordPress generation that is called the adjacent post rel link header. It means that WordPress is displaying relational links for the adjacent post to the current post for single post pages. So it means that it's printing those ID and that could happen that our function interferes with this um, printing of ID or gets triggered with this retrieving of IDs by WordPress and we save 
post ID, we save post meta and we increase the count of related posts that are not actually being viewed by the user. I hope it's clear, but just to avoid this issue, we are gonna code a remove action type of hook. So this remove action hook gives us the ability to remove a specific option from WordPress that we don't want to trigger anymore. In our case, we don't want to trigger something that it's happening in the header, so WP head, in the generation of WP head, and the function that we want to remove is the one that I told you before, the adjacent underscore posts underscore rel, that stands for relative, link, WP hat. By doing this and specify 10, that is the position, and 0, that is the number of parameters that we want to pass. By doing this, we are removing this specific action of WordPress that retrieves IDs of relatives, IDs, and posts because we want to avoid that these IDs are going to interfere with our function. And this removing action is not going to create any issues for WordPress. This is something extra for WordPress, but we don't need to manage those things so we can safely remove it. The last thing that we have to do, we have to copy this function access the list of files, go inside the single.php that is the file that a user access that WordPress uses to print the single blog post. So it's not going to be used to print pages, the home page, and other type of sections like search results or archives, but only the single blog post. And here, right inside the post, we can print our sunset save post view function and inside here we can pass the get the id because we're inside the post loop and we can return the get the id let's save it let's go back in our front end let's refresh and of course nothing happens because we are not seeing anything we have this function that it's saving now we generated a unique metadata in the database and it's saving every time i refresh this page or i access other uh, type of post. For example, if I load more and I access this post, I'm going to increase the views to this post. So in order to check, let's do something. Let's update a little bit this function. And after updating the post meta, let's print just the views. So let's echo views. So every time we update, Every time we access the views should increase because it's getting the uh, post meta related to this meta key related to the post ID that we're viewing. And let me actually do this, print h1, so it's going to be super visible. Refresh. And let's ask it gallery 2. 4. That means 4 time if we refresh. Five times, every time we refresh, this number is increasing because we are saving the post meta. And of course, if we go back and we access another type of post format, for example, this one, the link post format, it's going to be just two. If we refresh, go to three. If we access that gallery two, it's going to be nine again because we saw this nine times. And that's it. This is super easy, super simple. We are just hooking the visualization of specific post to the action of saving that view count inside the database. Now we have these basic things, so we can now create our widget, and we're going to do that in the next lesson. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.